What's up guys? Justin here with the RealtimeEssentials.com back with another Unity asset tutorial for you. So as a lot of you know, creating levels inside of Unity can be a little bit tricky. There's just a lot of like copying and moving different things around, things like that. So I've always had trouble doing this quickly and easily. So I thought what I'd do is I'd try out a tool in the Unity asset store that's supposed to make this a lot easier. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna check out the Octave 3D level design tool. This is basically a tool that's designed um, in order to make creation of levels with prefabs really easy. So it's basically an asset that gives you a tool set that helps you snap and paint everything together um, so that you can quickly create levels inside of 3D. Note that this is currently on sale in the Unity Asset Store for 50% off as a part of their Black Friday deal. I will link to this in the notes down below if you wanna check it out. But what we wanna do is we wanna jump over into Unity, first of all. And we wanna make sure that we've enabled, but first off, you wanna make sure that you've enabled the Octave 3D level design tool. So you wanna make sure you import that. Um, you wanna make sure that you download that and import that into Unity. What that's gonna do is that's basically going to add a folder right here called the Octave 3D World Builder. And what you can do is you can double click on this documentations and open up this PDF file. Um, and that's going to basically give you all of the hotkeys that are involved with this tool. And so it is worth you going through and learning the hotkeys in here because they're gonna make your life a whole lot easier when you're actually placing objects inside of Unity. Note that this is a tool for placing prefab assets. So you do need to make sure that you have prefab asset packs in order to place these. So we're going to use the dark fantasy asset pack because it has a number of different prefabs in here that we can use in order to set up our scenes. So it's got walls, floors, other things like that. I will link to this in the notes down below. You could use other packs as well. We're just going to use this one for simplicity's sake. And so what we want to do is we want to start by creating a new scene. So we're going to go to file, new scene, and then what we wanna do is we want to add an empty right here. And when you add an empty, we're just gonna call this Octave. In order to enable this, what you wanna do is you wanna add a component to this. And we just wanna search for Octave 3D World Builder. And so when you attach this, what that's gonna do is that's gonna turn on the Octave 3D World Builder. Notice how this gives you a number of different options in here for placing objects inside your scene. So. If we look at this, um, the first thing you're gonna notice is these big graphics right here. So these big graphics indicate the different tools that you have available to you. Notice how when you click on a different one of these, the options down below change as well. So um, you've basically got object placement tools, object selection tools, object erase tools, and then object snapping tools. So the object snapping tools are gonna adjust the, uh, the way that objects snap together inside of Octave. But what we wanna do is we wanna set this up to add different objects. And so the way this works is you basically set up prefab libraries inside of Octave 3D in order to place objects. So, so what we wanna do is we wanna click on this button right here for prefabs. Notice what this does is this opens up a tab called prefab management um, that you can use in order to control which prefabs are available. And so if you look at this, um, notice that there's different categories in here or there will be when you create them. Right now there's just a default category. But let's say for example, that we wanted to create a category for walls. So what we can do is we can click in here and we're just gonna create a walls category. So we're just gonna click right here in order to create this. Notice how now you have different categories in here, right? You can select default, you can select walls. Well then what you do is you wanna drop prefabs and prefab folders in here to populate this. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you options for things that you can place inside of your scene. Well in this situation, what we wanna do is we wanna drag over some of the prefabs from the dark fantasy asset pack. So let's go into the assets folder and we're gonna to go to prefabs, prefabs, and then wall. And so notice how there's a number of different kinds of walls in here. Um, so what you could do is you could drag these in here one at a time, right? like this. So notice how there's a ton of different windows and other walls in here. And so when we drag those over, those are gonna show up inside of this folder right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us the ability to add these objects to our scene from inside of the Octave 3D World Builder. So notice how now 
if I select one of these objects and then mouse over my scene, that wall is going to show up in here like this. So then I can click in order to create the wall, right? Just like this. So you can click, click, click. If I want to add a different prefab, I can just select that prefab and then click on that right here. So notice how that makes adding things into your scene really easy. We'll talk more about that in a second. But for now, what we want to do is we want to focus on the fact that we can actually drag complete folders in here as well. So I don't want to drag all of these walls in here at once. I want to drag the entire folder in here. So we're just going to go back into wall and instead of adding the walls in there one by one, we're just going to drag the folder for walls in here. And so what that does is that adds all of the objects that are in there as walls, just like this. So now I can select any of these and add them to my scene. And so because we already have a wall folder in here, we don't need the walls that we created. So we can just right click in here, remove active category. So what that's going to do is that's going to remove that from this list. So you can use this in order to quickly populate this. So let's say for example that I wanted to add my floors. So we'll go over into the floor options right here and I actually want to just drag the entire floor folder in here like this. So when I drag the whole floor folder in here, what that's going to do is that's going to add all of the subfloors or subfolders that are in here as well. So Notice how, for example, this had folders for checker, um, cobblestone, all of that. Well, all of those that were in the folder got created in here so that I can quickly and easily add these into my scene just by selecting them like this. And so notice that you can also filter by name. So if we were to go back into our wall folder, for example, and we wanted only the corridor items, what we could do is we could just type in the name corridor in here and that's actually going to filter this out. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to quickly find objects inside of Octave. All right, so I'm going to dock this back down here and what we want to do now is let's create a new scene. So I'm going to go to File, New Scene and what we want to do is we want to take a look at the way that we can use this Octave 3D World Builder in order to add objects to our level. We're going to add an Octave 3D World Builder over here. One thing to note is even though I'm recording my screen, you might want to think about opening up the prefab management in another monitor. If you have that, it's just going to give you more screen space over here. All right, so let's go ahead and let's add some floors. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go to the floor. Uh, we'll go with the floor checker option right now. And so what I want to do is I'm going to start adding these into my scene. So I can do that by just clicking on them and then clicking in my scene right here like this. And so notice what's happening with these is these are currently snapping to the grid that's inside of the scene like this. And so you can see how because we have that grid in here, placing those can be really easy even with the different sides because it's snapping to the right locations. And so notice how you can adjust the rotation of objects by using the X, Y, and Z keys. So notice how if I um, do the Y, for example, this is rotating this um, 90 degrees every time I hit the Y key. Um, if I tap the X key, it's going to rotate this on the X axis. And if I tap the Z key, it's going to rotate it on the Z axis. So we can use this in order to quickly rotate those objects. You can also hold Shift and Y or X in order to fine rotate this object like this. So you can use it in order to quickly rotate objects this way or let's say that you wanted to rotate this up a little bit. Maybe you wanted like a ramp or something like that. So you do like a shift X and you can rotate that in order to get that ramp look in here. So shift X, shift Y, shift Z is gonna allow you to do that. And again, notice how it's gonna be really important to pay attention to that manual. So the manual is gonna allow you to quickly shift between these different tools in here. So for example, notice how you can toggle the different placement modes by using the one, two, three, and four keys on your keyboard. And so notice if you type the one key, this is going to put you in decor placement mode, meaning it doesn't really snap to anything in here. You can just kind of place this wherever. Two is going to put you in point and click placement mode. So that's where this is basically going to snap to the grid and allow you to place objects like this. So three is going to put you in path placement mode. So path placement mode, is going to allow you to set points by clicking and then it'll place the object 
in a path. When you're done, you can just do the shift left mouse button and it's gonna place those objects in here. So you can use that in order to quickly place objects along a path inside of your scenes. And then four on your keyboard is gonna put you in block placement mode. That's gonna allow you to quickly create a block of objects inside of your scenes. So you can single click, then click again in order to place a block of objects in here. And so let's say we wanted to add some walls to this object. So we just go into our wall group right here. There's a ton of different options in here, but let's select one of these shorter walls right here. We wanna make sure that we tap the two key to make sure that we're in point and click placement mode. But what we can do is, is we can tap the Y key in order to rotate this so that we can place it along our floor object right here. So then we could come in here on this grid and just really quickly create these objects like this, or alternatively, probably a faster way to do this is you could also drop this into play, or, uh, path mode just by tapping the three key and then clicking. But then if I do a shift mouse button and click right here, that's gonna place those objects really quickly. So one tool that I find really useful in this tool set is notice, so notice how this is built around the pivot points of your objects, right? And so right now this is snapping to the central pivot point. Um, well, what you can do is you can tap the J key in order to adjust the pivot point that you're using right here. So when you adjust that pivot point that you're using, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to set objects based on different points on the wall. In this situation, for example, I can use the corner point right here. And then one other thing is you can also tap the K key to adjust the grid in here to basically be the size of the object that you have selected. So what that means is that means that now you don't have to mess around with um, trying to find the different pivot points in here. This is just gonna create a grid that you can automatically snap to in order to quickly add these walls in here. So when you do that, notice how it's really fast um, in order to bring these in um, because the pivot point or the snap points are exactly the size and the location you need them to be so you can place these objects in your scene. So if you're interested in this tool, I will leave a link to it on this page. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about it. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.